All right. Praise the Lord. Where am I on the internet? I'm the Trent Church of God. <clears throat> Actually, excuse me. I got a little uh, frog in my throat this morning. <laughs> but uh, we're glad that those of you that are listening yeah. by the ways of the internet and uh, Facebook. But Don is going to come and sing a couple of good songs for us. And uh, let's uh, help him here by praying for him. And uh, he'll, he'll do a better job. Come on, Brother Don. Yes, thank you. All right. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning.
All right, Sister Woods, will you do me a favor? Will you stand up and testify for a minute? I gotta go change something. <laughs> but it's good to be in the house of God in the church. There are not a few, but he said where two or three would gather together, he'd be in the midst. So I enter so we're gathered here and I don't want to leave like I come this morning. I want to refresh it in the mind. And I believe the Word will refresh us. Don't you believe? Amen. I love good singing, but the Word's what's going to set us free this morning. And I thank God that I'm amongst the living this morning. I'll be 86 a tenth of eight. And I thank God for that. I'm living on bar times. But when he calls, I'm going to answer here and I say, Amen. Somebody else wants to say something for the Lord. Who wants to say something for the Lord? Walk over in the aisle. Walk over in the aisle. There he is. They hear your voice a lot, but they don't never see you. No, I want them to see you this morning. This all right? Go on up. Well, I thank God for the day he came into my life, the Lord, the God. I bless him. And you know, living with God inside of you is something. Yeah. Do you know he talks to you? He talks uh, to oh you. my God, when I first joined the church and they said God talked to you, I thought they were crazy. But he talks to you. Yeah. And you can talk to him yeah. and he'll give you an answer. Yeah. I just yeah. bless the day the Lord came into my life. I've never been so happy since that day that oh, he came into right. my life. And I praise his holy name and I thank him oh, for right. everything yeah. he has yes. done in my life. He has gave me a brand new life. Woo! Praise the Lord. Praise <laughs> the Lord. Yes. Anybody else have something they want to say for the Lord? Sister Burgess. No? Okay. Charles? What happened? You got something you want to say? Amen. I'm going to sing your song. Okay, get stuck. <laughs>
hear it song. How many knows the Lord's coming again? Amen. Real, real soon. It's been not long ago, some years ago, I guess, a prophet came forth and prophesied in these last days that men would think strange, that they would never dream of thinking and doing things, uh, their mind continually evil. That's the day that we're living in, friends. Contrary to what anybody says, we're living in that day. Now, I know we got people that are mid-trib, pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib. <laughs> I don't care what trip we're in, you better be ready to meet the Lord. Come on. Because he's coming after a bride. Yes, man. Hallelujah. Man. And it's a beautiful bride that's made herself ready. And Jeremiah, everybody knows Jeremiah by the weeping prophet. I want you to listen very close to what Jeremiah says. He wept for the people of God. And in uh, the 11th verse, he, here he says, Has a nation changed their gods, which are yet no gods? But my people have changed their glory for that which does not profit. Be astonished, O ye heavens, and at this. And afraid to be very desolate, says the Lord. Says the Lord. For my people are committed. My people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living water. They have hewed them out systems, broken systems, that can hold no water. Isn't that the day that we're living in? Yes. Jeremiah prophesied this many, many years ago. That my people have changed their glory. I heard it preached some years ago when the Church of God or any other denomination wants to be like other denominations. In other words, if the Church of God wants to be like this denomination, that denomination, then they will be changing their glory. And I thank God that there's some of us still standing preaching the old time way. I am. I know these modern day Pharisees, preachers standing in the pulpit. And they really, we've come to today that they make mockery of people speaking in the heavenly language, speaking in tongues. And uh, these are not all Baptists and Methodists and Presbyterians and Episcopalians. And these are some Pentecostal people that are making fun, even as I preach here this morning. There'll be people that will sit in their easy chair drinking their beer and making fun and laughing at the way that I preach the message. But you know, I don't care. I made up my mind I'm not to please man because if I please man, I cannot please God. Amen. We have got to make up our mind. We've got to be fully persuaded what we're doing. We're doing it for the glory of God, not for the praises of man. And Paul the Apostle said, I come to you. I don't come to you with enticing words of men's wisdom, but in the power and the demonstration of the Holy Ghost. Come on. There's another subject that a lot of people don't like to hear about is the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And they make mockery of the people that are obeying God. Some years ago, this church was filled with people. Uh, every church. Today, we're looking around. I've talked to different pastors. They only have a handful of people. It's not only this church, it's every, every church in the land today. And I, I think what's happening, we've changed the glory to another glory. The glory of God, which there is no other God. There's only one God, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jew, Gentile, bound, or free, we're all made to drink of that one spirit. And if we're not then we're in the wrong category. <laughs> Praise God. We've got to live right, talk right, smell right, be right, and go to heaven right. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now the Bible talks about a whole lot of things about heaven. It talks about a place where Jesus said, I am going to prepare for you a place, and if I go, I'll come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, 
there you be, will be also. Come on. How many looking forward for that glorious yeah. day? Yeah. 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 When you walk on the streets of gold, yeah. when, you, when, you, when you look at the walls of Jasper and you see the no sun or no moon because the Lamb of God's going to be the light of that city. Come on. I'm going to tell you, friend, I'm not going to change my glory. I am not going to change my glory, the glory of God that came up on me some 50 some years ago. And it's still, it may be old fashioned preaching, but I'm going to tell you, it was good enough for Grandma, it's good enough for Grandpa, it's good enough for me today. I'm not going to change it to where we're in the day and time that people are changing everything. Yes. Our churches are changing. I'll tell you, they're taking out the old red back hymn books. They're doing away with that. And they're, they're, uh, one pastor said, I'm going a different direction. We're going a different direction. Well, I'm going to tell you, friend, when you start going to modern direction today, you're going to get away from God. I don't want to get out of tune with God. I don't know about you, I want to stay in tune with Him. Don't you? I want to stay in contact. Thank God when I come to the house of God, I, I want to come in and, and know that God's Spirit is here in the midst of us. And if He's not here, you might as well go home and watch television. Come on. That's exactly what happened to uh, uh, Jehoshaphat. It looked like he was come to his end. The Bible says he was a great king. And uh, he was surrounded by the enemy. He didn't know what to do. You ever got to the place you didn't know what to do? You ever got to the place you didn't have no answers? Amen. You ever get to the place you like God's a tree and be and me and smiles from you? He's, yeah. uh, he's close to the breath of your nostrils. Come on. And so John Spike didn't know what to do. So he said he called a prayer meeting. Now we're gonna be a we're gonna have some big prayer meetings called in the near future. You're gonna see people coming to God and crying out. I, I'm predicting. I'm not no prophet, but I'm predicting the next two years is gonna be the worst time America has ever seen. People are gonna lose their jobs. There's coming an economic collapse. You don't believe it? I believe it. And what, what's gonna happen? They're going to cry to God then. Now Israel, Israel when they was in Egypt bondage, God saw their tears. They cried out to God. He saw the tears. And he brought them out of there. He told Moses he had to have a deliverer. Somebody's got to preach the truth today. Somebody's got to take the message. Somebody's got to stand up and say, Behold, thus saith the word of the Lord. Somebody's going to have to get in and get in the groove, amen, and get the preaching the gospel of old time religion, praise God, that will never get old to me. Because it, took, it stood these all these years, and it's still good today to come to the house of God. And today all you go in most churches today, all you see is smoke and lights and darkness and turning out the lights. God's not in that bunch of mess. Amen? Amen? I said God's not in that kind of religion. So they're changing their glory to another God. To the God of the flesh. You know, they want to attract people. In fact, they just want to entertain people. We're living in the day the church world is caught into the entertainment world. And we need a revival. Now listen to me. We need a revival um, for the preachers today. Yeah. Yeah. A revival just for the preachers today. Come on. Get the dead heads out of the pulpit. Hey Amen. Come on. Get them out. Praise God if they ain't preaching the truth. Get rid of them. I, I, if, if I ever get to the place I compromise, I want God to put me out. Come on. Hey Amen. I mean that. Y'all put me out of here. My God, take up a petition. Get me out of here. If I don't preach the gospel of Jesus Christ across of Jesus Christ, then I'm not preaching the gospel. And they're, they're, not, they're, they're afraid to preach on the blood them up today. They're afraid to preach. Jeremiah said, you change your glory. You change your glory to another God, which is no other God. Amen. You've hewed out systems, that, uh, a broken system that can hold no water. That's what the church world has done today. This huge out system. There's no spirit anymore. One uh, Af African American preacher, I heard him say a number of years ago, he said people today are made out of gopher wood. Now gopher wood is what they made the ark out of, or I mean made the, uh, some of the boats with, and they had knots in them. And said sometimes them knots would pop out. And that's the way some of God's people are today. They popped out and leaked all over. 
They got systems that can't hold no water. They got the power of God that one time they could come to the house of God with burning testimony. We got pre preachers right today sitting home, amen, flipping your television, your internet, amen, and on your computer, and you feel like you ought to just stay at home and not come to the house of God. And I'm going to tell you, the Bible says, forsake not the assembly of yourself together more often as you see this day coming upon the people. Judgment is coming. I believe we're under judgment right now. Yes. I believe God's bringing judgment upon America. All this weather, bad weather. I don't hear nobody preaching global warming anymore. <laughs> Do you? Hey Amen. God's letting them know I'm still in control of this thing. So thank God today for His Word. Thank God for the church of the living God. Thank God I'll never change. I'm the same. I'm going to be like Jesus. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. What he's done years ago, he's doing today. Amen. Can you say amen? Amen. Woo! Can you say amen? amen? What he's done when he brought Israel out of Egypt's bondage. The Bible said there wasn't a feeble one among them. Grandpa didn't come out of there in a wheelchair. Grandma didn't come out of there where, uh, with a crutch and a cane. Nobody was sick. Brought them all out of Egypt's bondage. Until they got over into the wilderness. Yeah. Moses went up on the mountain to get the Ten Commandments. And when he got up on the mountain, they said, This Moses, we don't know what's happening to him. And so they started making him another God, which there is no other God. I just read it to you. Started to make another God. And when they did that, they were committing adultery, fornication, and everything. Out the bottom. Aaron was a leader of that bunch of people that turned against God, turned against Moses. Now, you remember when God told us, there's a little humor in this, when God told Moses, I want you to go down and lead my people out of Jesus' bondage. Well, when they messed up in the wilderness, God said, Moses, your people, all of a sudden they become Moses' people. <laughs> Hallelujah. God didn't want nothing to do with them. They become Moses and people. Moses, I, I can say to him, say, wait a minute, God. You said they're your people. Now you're saying they're my people. So when they came down there, Moses broke the Ten Commandments. The only man that ever broke the Ten Commandments at one time. On the table of stone, just broken. Because the people were doing so much evil. But that's what's happening today. These modern day Pentecostal preachers are just... They ain't got enough. They ain't got enough power to blow the plug off a peach. Preacher, Come on, say man. Praise God. We need some Amen. preachers in the pulpit today that will preach the gospel and the power and the demonstration of the Holy Ghost in that yeah. Paul said, I am not going to preach to you with enticing words. We got them today. If you don't go and get some PhDs, degrees, post hole diggers, DDs. Devil disturbers. We got them today. Got all kinds of degrees. Some time ago, they come out with that theory: if we could just educate all the people, there'd be no more crime. Now we got educated crooks. <laughs> educated crooks. Crime is on the war, on the rampage. Never have I seen a time in history, and which we're living in today, when people are killing one another. Yep. The chief of the police over in Detroit stood up. I heard him say it. He said, we're killing one another. He's right. That's what's going on in the city of Detroit. Now, I'm going to tell you, it's happening in all major cities. People have no respect for God no more. There was a time you could walk down the street with that black Bible under your arm and people would drop their head. Today, they make mockery of you. Look at that little fanatic. Look at that. That's right. <laughs> Call me whatever you want to call me. But just don't call me late for supper. Praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Somebody say praise God. Yes, Lord. I'm glad to be a child of the King. I'm glad I know Him as my Lord and Master and Savior. And I want to tell you what they're preaching today. It, 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 they won't preach the cross anymore. The suffering of Jesus on the cross. That he died and paid for our sins, sins of the whole world, and our any any sin that you commit right now, 
Even John said, little children, I write unto you that you sin not, but if you do sin, you have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. He's faithful and just if we confess our sins to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Thank God. And the fellow got in the pulpit here a while back and he started singing, I'm the righteousness of God. The pastor got up and stopped him from singing. Said, you know you ain't righteous. Well, the Bible's wrong if he ain't righteous. The Bible says, he that knew no sin was made sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. We are in right standing with God if we know Him as our Lord and Savior and Master. And contrary to what the world and all the modern day Pharisees might be telling you today, I'm going to tell you, oh yes, 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 I know they're mocking, I know they're out there criticizing, but it doesn't bother me one bit. Thank God, amen. At least we're getting somebody's attention anyway. Amen. Amen. At least you're going to hear the message, heaven or hell, get in, get out, or get run over. Because the church is going out of here with a shout and with a praise, with a hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yeah. We're going out of here, and when that trumpet sounds, if you're in the ground, we're coming out of that ground. Oh. Ain't no brain going to hold my body down. Oh, I look over Jordan. What do you think I seen? I seen a band of angels coming after me. Because there ain't no grave going to hold this body down. Thank God when you gave them loads that trumpet. Thank God we're coming out of the ground if we're there. Thank God if we're not there, we're going to be chained in a moment and twinkling in the night. And they, they may may get a six foot jump on us. But together we'll be called up to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Lord. He said, comfort one another Amen. with these words. Amen. Jesus is soon coming. Oh, you say, preacher, I've heard that all my life. Yeah, I have too. You let a snowstorm let the channel uh, 11 clock news, you let it come on and say that it's coming a snowstorm. People will run to the supermarkets and fill their baskets to the capacity. <laughs> But you let them tell them the Lord's coming and the place will be. I, I went to the supermarket and thought I was going to get run over here a while back. <laughs> People, there's a snowstorm coming. Well, friend, they're going to be worse than a snowstorm coming. You can sit there and laugh at me if you want to. Oh, well, hell's going to break out after a while. You talk about a time, there's going to be a time such as never has been or never shall be. The day of Jacob's trouble. You're talking about a time that's going to happen, friend, when men will seek to die, die and death will plead from them. They'll mock. Amen. They'll blaspheme that worthy name of the Lord Jesus Christ as he sits on the right hand of God the Father who hath power over these plagues. Amen. That the angels are going to pour out in the last days. People don't believe that either. Look at Revelations. We've been reading in Revelation, and it really has. I've read Re Revelation many, many times. And I find in there where there's coming such a time in the last days that one third of the earth is going to be burned up, Amen. destroyed. One third of the people. Got the atomic power of doing this. Come on. Right now, it looks like we're almost engaged in war with Russia. Yep. War, war, war. Everywhere you look at wars. Every time you turn your television on, some nation is coming against another nation. Now, and you know that's fulfilling to the Bible. That's right. Nations against yeah. nations, kingdoms against kingdoms. Yeah. It's happening, friends, like we've never seen it before. You know what I heard the other day? Kind of, kind of uh, made me glad to hear this. The Muslim world. Do you know that God is sending visions and dreams to them and they're turning to Jesus? They don't know what's happening in the Muslim world. Now, we got a preacher in our organization, Brother Nichols is his name. He's working with these kind of people. And thank God, they're God's people too, you know. Right. I'm not no <laughs> judger of people. I believe they're God's people, but I believe they need to be saved. They, I know they got to change their God. I know that because there's only one God. They got to change their glory of that what they call their, their God. Allah's not the way. Buddha's not the way. Muhammad's not the way. 
Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, the life. No man come to the Father except through right. and by me. He is the door. Thank come God on. if anybody climb up any other way, he's a thief and a robber. Thank God he's a door. He's a way. He's the truth. He's the light. Yes. He's the lily of the valley. He's the bright and morning star. He's Alpha and Omega. He's the first and the last. Thank God. Hallelujah. He's coming again without sin unto salvation. To those who look for him shall he appear. I don't know about you, but I'm looking for the day when the Lord split the eastern sky. Thank God knowing that he's coming after his church that's got on the wedding garment. Now, friend, you better have that on the wedding garment. You better be walking in, in righteousness and holiness. Now, there's another word that people don't want to hear. It's sanctification. I didn't say crankification. I said sanctification. And that's something where you're set apart from the world. We're in the world, but we're not out of the world. God chose us out of here, Brother Dave. Yeah. Praise God. He chose us, chosen us out of here. And we're, so we're in this world, but thank God we're not of it. We're not of this world system. Amen. Somebody said, well, you know, look what's going to happen in the last days. You know, it shouldn't worry us. We know what's going to happen. I mean, if you don't know your Bible, you don't know what's going to happen in the last days. And that, that Bible is a, is a will of God, and we need to know what the will is. Amen. And I've said many times, there cannot be a will. Jesus had to come and, and do away with the old cold dead letter of the law. And, they, they was, uh, and the Bible says now that we're under a new covenant established upon better promises than the old Abrahamic covenant or Moses covenant. We're under another covenant, a better covenant established upon better promises. So they had to be the death of a testator before they could be uh, New Testament written. So Jesus was done away with the law. And because God sent prophets, they killed them. And last of all, he sent his son and they killed him. And so God seen right then that the law, through the weakness of man's flesh, they could not keep his word. They could not keep the commandments. And... Uh, Praise God, Jesus walked. Jesus is the only perfect man that ever walked in the world. Now, I've said this many times. I don't care when people get mad at me anyway. Uh, you just have to get glad. Don't get bitter, get better. Don't get mad, get glad. I hear people, you know, praise God. The law was until, uh, the, uh, the law and the prophets were until John. And since then, Jesus Christ has been preached. And so we accept him as our Lord and Savior and Master. Yeah. He's coming after people that's got the wedding garment, as I said. He's coming after people that's prepared to meet their God. You see signs along the roadside, prepare to meet thy God. Right. I seen a sign going into Detroit here a while back. It said, uh, uh, God is in control of Detroit. Now I thought, my Lord, he is. <laughs> I don't know what. I don't know what, what in the world all this killing going on in the city of Detroit and all this murdering going on. We're, we're about the number one capital murder city in the world now. Flint, Michigan, and Detroit is about the number one murder city in the world. Now, people don't want to hear that, and I don't care whether you want to hear it or not, but God always sent a warning before he always sends judgment. And uh, so certainly Jesus was a perfect man, and everybody in here. Jesus had to die for the sin. I don't, I don't understand how God could put the sins of him, uh, uh, of us up on him. He was made sin. Made Amen. sin. Now they're preaching now, some of them preaching now that Jesus had a de was demon possessed on the cross. And they're preaching that Jesus had to be born again. He never committed no sin. <laughs> God put it up on him. I don't understand this. This is Joanne. I don't understand how God could put all the sins of the human race upon him. And, and, and he paid the supreme sacrifice. I don't understand these things. I don't understand the love of God, neither do you. But I understand this one thing, that Jesus walked perfectly before the Heavenly Father. And everything he done, he done it because of the will of God, because God spoke to him and told him what to do. Yes. He said, I'll do nothing without my father telling me. And he said, me and my father are one. Now, I don't mean they're just one person. The father, the son, the Holy Ghost. That's when Jesus was dying on the cross. He cried out, my God, my God. Why didn't he cry out, my God, my God, my God, three times? Because God the son was on the cross. 
My God, my God, why has he forsaken me? Well, he, he was on the cross. Why has he forsaken me? Now, he was a man just like we were, just like I am. He didn't want to go to the cross. He didn't want to die, but he knew he had to. For that purpose, he came into the world to die for the sins of humanity. And yet the world has turned him away. His own people. He came into his own. His own received him not. But as many as received him to them gave he power to become the sons of God. He'll say to God, I'm a son of God. Woo! Yes. Glory to God. Yeah. Now, now you're a son of God. You're a daughter of God this morning. Amen. Your name is written down in glory. So Jesus was the only perfect man that ever walked in this world. Somebody said, well, now, I'm pretty good. I don't know, have no marks against me. Uh, I'll see if you have. The Bible says if you're guilty of the least, you're guilty of the whole. If you're guilty of gossip, you might as well commit adultery. You might as well commit murder. Guilty of the least, you're guilty of the whole. God help us to get control of this little member. That's speaking great things, swelling words. It's full of deadly poison, set on fire of hell, a world of iniquity. We bless God and curse men. These things are not to be. Come on, somebody say amen. 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 Hallelujah. Come on. Yes, God. The tongue is a deadly thing. And uh, some of you right now probably mock me, all right? Your tongue one of these days is going to burn in hell fire. You're sitting there drinking your beer and you're having yourself a good time. You say, hey, wife, come here and let's watch this crazy preacher. Come in here and listen to him. The poor fellow's lost his mind. I, I thank God I've lost my mind. Cool. And I got the mind of Jesus. Oh, <laughs> Hallelujah. I said, I got the mind of Jesus. Amen. The Bible says, any man being Christ is a new creature. We're created anew. This inner man, this Spirit man here is a perfect man. He's perfect. He will not sin, cannot lead you in sin, will not sin. Thank God it's perfect. And we're born by the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, on the day of Pentecost. The Bible says about the hunting, 20 people were together, together. They didn't know what was going to happen. But all of a sudden, there come a sound from heaven. And suddenly, there come a sound from heaven as a mighty rushing wind and set up on each and every one of them. And they began to speak in heavenly language as the Spirit of God gave them the other. Yes. And men came. And the Bible says when it was noise abroad, you know, some of you modern day Pentecostals don't, can't stand noise in your church until you get your music going and your people jumping and your blue lights going, amen, and turn out the lights. And yeah, that's the only time you can understand understand it, but I'll tell you, praise God, the day is going to come, friend, when these mockers and criticizers is going to stand before a just and holy God, and they're going to give account for the life they've lived. They persecuted the prophets, they'll persecute me and you and everybody else that's preaching the truth. Preachers today stands in the pulpit and says things and does things that they wouldn't have done 20 or 30 years ago. Come on, amen. It's the truth. Yes. Nobody knows what's going on in the church world. But the real prophets of God knows what's going on. We know the time is near. And I think so many times as we listen to our television preachers and how they bag for money trying to stay on the air Many, many preachers are going off because the economy. And if you're not a real popular preacher, if you don't have 50,000 people in your congregation, I listen to, you remember some time ago when these people in Boston got killed uh, with that bomb? I listened to one of a Pentecostal preacher. They asked him, said, do you believe that uh, they, they was interviewing, do you believe there's evil in the world? He said to him, and he said, yeah, I believe there's evil. Why didn't he say there's a devil that's a god of this world? Why didn't he say that? He wanted to say it kindly. He's afraid he's going to offend some of his believers, you know. Yeah. Some of the people, his followers, in other words, not believers, but followers, which never says anything about sin, which never preaches what I'm preaching here in the pulpit. They wouldn't dare to preach against homosexuality. 
They wouldn't preach against the lesbians. No, no, no. They wouldn't preach that. You know why? They wouldn't have no 50,000 in their congregation. Come on. I'm telling you the truth. It's the truth. One of our great prophets of the day stood up and said, Why don't you preach what Paul preached? They said, Well, what did Paul preach? Paul preached reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine for the time going to come. They will not endure sound doctrine, but they'll heap to themselves teachers having itching ears and they'll turn their ears from the truth and be turned into fable. But he said, preach the word, Timothy. Preach the word, Timothy. Preach the word, Brother Burgess. Preach the word. Amen. Don't matter. It doesn't matter what man might say. Preach the word. Amen. Paul got stone for what he preached Amen. and left for dead. Amen. I've always believed this when Paul said, I knew a man about 14 years ago, well, in the spirit, out of the spirit, such a one God knows, called up to the third heaven. You know there's the third heaven? Yeah. There's the excellent glory where we're called up to the third heaven. First Amen. heaven you see is a cloud, the second is a planet, the third is God's throne. Paul was called up to the throne room of God and heard words that wasn't lawful for a man to utter. And when he came back into his body, his spirit left his body, he went to heaven, he seen all these things, his body uh, just dormant until his spirit came back in him. And when he came back in, uh, Paul knew that he could not say what he saw or heard because it wouldn't have been lawful. He couldn't got his head through that door if he'd let that Things puff him up, you know, what he's seen and heard. Amen? Amen. That's the truth. So for this cause, God loud permitted a message of Satan. Somebody said, Paul had sickness, poor old Paul had fussy eyes. Well, let me ask you a question. If that was Paul's sickness, why why would anybody go to Paul and say, Paul, lay your hands on me and pray for me and puffs run out of his eyes? Would you believe anybody get healed? I don't. No, it was Paul's thorn in the way. The Bible tells us what Paul's thorn was. It was a messenger of Satan to buffer him. Every time he'd get up, when he came to town, he didn't say, where's your motel at? He'd say, where's your jailhouse at? That's where he was going. That's right, that's where he was going for preaching the truth. It's a messenger of Satan. Talking to him. Telling him, Paul, you're going to die. You're not going to make it. You can't preach. You're a hypocrite. Yeah, the devil never call you a hypocrite. That's all right. Praise God. You ought to shout for joy. I said, you ought to shout for joy. And the devil calls you a hypocrite because God will never call you that. God loves us. Amen. And I'm so thankful today that we have the privilege to come to thousands and thousands of people in the internet world that may be turned in today. I know we're, we're getting a congregation built up and uh, Brother Charles is going to come and lead, read some uh, information where you can get a hold of us. I want you to pray with me. All of you pray the sinner's prayer. If you really want to get born again, you really want to know Jesus Christ, you want to come out of these dead, dried up, ice burden churches and find a living church and find a good church where you can walk in and feel the presence of God Thank God as soon as you walk through the door. I've had people tell me when we walk through this door, they feel the presence of God in here. And I'm going to tell you, if God ain't here, go on and watch television and do something. But His presence is here. We may not be very many in, 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 the, in the body here today, but thank God the ones that I've got here, I love them, and I know they're good people. I know everybody in this building right this morning is good people. I believe it with all my heart. Thank God. And uh, I, I want, I want uh, those of you that listen to the message and you need salvation, I want you to bow your head right now and repeat the sinner's prayer after me. I've seen Billy Graham repeat this prayer many times and millions and millions of people have been saved by his ministry and came to Jesus. Though they, he can't be there to lay hands on them, neither can I and pray for you. But we can send the word. The Bible says they sent, God sent his word and healed them. So I'm going to send God's word to you. I've already sent it to you this morning. Salvation is of the Lord. And if you want to get born again, all you have to do, it's not no, no hard thing to get born again. All you got to do is call upon the name of the Lord and say, Father, I'm a sinner. 
Will you repeat this after me? Say, Dear God in heaven, I'm a sinner. I need to be saved. My home needs to be saved. Lord, come into my life. Change me. Make a new creature out of me. Write my name down in the Lamb's Book of Life, and I'll serve you all the days of my life. I'll walk with you. I'll talk with you. I'll commune with you. I'll fellowship with you. I'll follow you in water baptism. I'll follow you in Bible study and reading. I'll follow you to the house of God and forsake not myself to assemble together more often as we see this day approaching. Friends, if you prayed that prayer with me, with a sincere heart, Jesus Christ has now become the Lord of your life and you are now born again. And I know you feel God's presence. Lift your hands right now all over the world and say, Thank God for salvation. You might be Jewish, you might be a Catholic, you might be a Muslim, you might be a Protestant. I don't care who you are. Just lift your hands and say, Thank God for old time salvation. Thank God my home is saved, my household is saved. The Lord has come into my life, He's come into my home. There's going to be a change made. Amen. And the joy of the Lord is going to be my strength. Will you, will you uh, right now just praise God and lift up your voice and praise Him and say, magnify His name. Clap your hands over you saints, the Bible says, praise His name. Hallelujah. Wherever you may be, God will be there with you. Father, I thank you for the message today. And I pray, oh God, that you will go with us, help us to never change our glory to another God, to another glory. Help us, Lord, not try to be like other denominations. Lord, help us just be what God called us to be. And I'm not saying we're the only denomination that's right. I know, God, you've got people all over the world. Yes. And I know that there's people that love you with all their heart. And we know that. And we thank you, Lord, for your people, wherever they may be, whatever church they may be in. Yes. Lord, I know there's good people in all churches. But I know there's a lot of churches that are not getting the truth. They're getting entertainment instead of getting the Word of God. God, bring them out of those places. Bring them where they can hear the unadulterated Word of God preached every Sunday, every Wednesday. Praise God. In Jesus' mighty name, we ask and pray. Brother Charles, I want you to give him information on how to get a hold of us, contact us, and uh, Thank you, Pastor. That was a wonderful message this morning, powerful in, in the Word of God. And all those out in the Internet land, I hope you heard and enjoyed the Word. Those that are, I hope there were some that come to Jesus this morning and accepted Him as their personal Savior. And we're praying for you. And we're looking for you to, to come here and, and to fellowship with us and to visit with us. We welcome all visitors, wherever you may be, if you're in the vicinity. We welcome you to come into this church and to fellowship with us. And if you don't have a home church, we welcome you to come in and be a part of this church. We pray, God, that well, he'll lead you by your, his sweet Holy Spirit. And this morning, if you want to contact us out there in the Internet land, number one is a way to contact us. We're at Trenton Church of God, 35, that's 35, Rowing, O-R-E-R-O-E-R-I-G, Rowing. And that's Trenton, Michigan, 48183. Trenton Church of God, 35 R O E H R I G Roy. Trenton, Michigan, 48183. Number two is an email address. It's Trenton Church of God. Go to att.net, all small letters. That's att.net, all small letters. Number three way to contact us is the web address. If you want to look at past sermons or, or leave a message or look upcoming events, you could go to our web address, and that's trentonchurchofgod.com. And you can look up and see past sermons, or, and you can also leave a message on the, on the, on the computer for us, and you can uh, look up... Uh, upcoming events and we welcome everyone that would come here and then we have a young man that has a Bible ministry. If you come and, and, and sit in the only requirement, if you come and sit into this service, one time we will give you a Bible to take with you. Right, yeah. Also, we have a powerful prayer call ministry. The, one of the women in the church has started this and we have given out approximately 400 of these. We sent them out all over the world and people are being touched 
by the hand of God, people are being healed, people are being raised up, people are being saved. 